Hi guys, it's me Ty coming back at you with another unboxing. This one is from Kotobukiya's chibi line, Kupoche, or Kaposh, or however you want to pronounce it. This one is of Rika Takanashi from the anime Love, Chinibio, and Other Delusions. Here's the front of the box. As you can see, as far as box designs go, this one is pretty awesome. You can see the Kaposh logo up top, Kupoche. Um, and down here, you can see the Kotobukiyo logo. Um, Kapoche figures are similar to Nendoroids, but as we get into the unboxing, you will be able to see some of the differences that we'll go over. But you can see she does come with extra faces in the bottom. And like I said, her, some of her accessories. Here's the top of the box with her name. She's so cute. Um, here's one side of it with a great pose. Here's the other side with her signature eye patch. <laughs> Here's the bottom, which is just like the top. And here's the back with uh, more poses. You see her with her machine gun and the different ways you can pose her, like with her umbrella. Okay, let's get into it. I already popped the tape on this and sort of ripped the boxes on the edges in my excitement, but hey. And here she is. All right, as I said, you can see her with her, well, she's wrapped in plastic and she has an awesome pose in the box. And her, again, her umbrella. Her other umbrella, her clothes one, and the machine gun. Her base is down here, and her two faces. Um, just to show you the inside of the box, you can see it just has a capote label inside. Um, and the tab is like uh, this purple, light purple. I don't know if those are gumballs or drops, or, but that's the pattern inside the box. Typical, I'm dropping everything. Okay. Here's her base down at the bottom. Okay. Right here, you can already see some differences compared to Nendoroids. Um, her extra hands are packaged down here with her base and not through the main plastic portion of the box like it would be with um, Nendoroids. You can see the arm for the bases. And, but I mean, this pretty much looks like standard, same as a Nendori, and you know, you should be familiar with that. Okay, already you can notice the differences with Kapoche versus uh, Nendoroids. This is the base. And as you can see, instead of the peg holes that you would have with an Nendoroid to um, stick the figure in, this one is a magnet. And there are magnets at the on the feet of the figure. As I said, here's all the extra hands. Can you see those? And the tip of her umbrella. And as I showed before, here's the arm to hold it in. Oh, and a little grabber around, I guess, to go around the waist. And an uh, extra peg piece. As for the faces, we have this one, which is her without her eye patch, and showing her Lord Shingen, her eye. This is, uh, I guess, her excited pose. See, her mouth is open. This is a, I guess, a sad or scared face. I don't know how you want to classify it. And again, it's without her eye patch. Oops. And this is a, so cute. Here's her umbrella, the opened up version of it.
and you can see it's really well made. See the detail on it? It's really good. Um, the pole. Here's the inside of the umbrella. It's really good detail. Here's her other accessories, her clothes version of her umbrella for, you know, sword fighting and jabbing. And her machine gun. And now we have the figure herself. Rika! Ah, she's awesome. Isn't she cute? I love this pose. I think this is the pose I want to keep her in, but I'll try the other faces. Get these plastic off her skirt. <laughs> She's missing her legs. Oh, they fell off. Anyway, oh, well, since that happened, I can show you the differences also between Nendoroids and Kopoche. See, um, as you can see, she does, her waist does separate the lower half, which is, you know, a Nendoroids also. And her hands can come off, similar to Nendoroids as well. But other than that, no, none of her other limbs, like her arms and legs, don't come off as you would in a normal, um, in I mean, not in a normal, but in a typical Nendoroid. You're able to remove arms, hands, legs, and everything, and you can't do that in a Capoche figure. But she's cute the way she is, so she doesn't need all of that. I mean, I guess her skirt comes off so I can take this plastic off, but that's it. Yep, that comes off. Let's see? I guess if she didn't want to have a skirt on. Okay, um, besides her hands, you can see her, the front bang does come off, even though there's a little piece sticking up. And her eye patch, it's attached to the hair. That's how it's on. There's slight imprints where the... I don't know if you can see that. No, I don't think you can because the hair is too dark. But there's slight imprints and not quite notches where the eye patch fits in on the sides. Here she is with her ponytail side and with her face. Oh, and I was so excited to see the other pieces. I didn't even look at what's down here, which is the instructions for the figure. And, let's see, which is Just a sheet, I don't know if you can see that, showing you, it's a pretty big sheet, showing you all the things you can do with the figure, the poses. And the bag that Capoche figures come with that you're able to put your extra pieces in, which is useful because you know you don't want them just dropping around all over the place. I actually love this. This is the figure in a standard pose that she comes in. I just want to show you, um, well, the arm grabbing around if you want to display her this way rather than stick the peg in her back. And also that the magnetic portion on her feet. The magnets are strong and uh, she can stand up on it without the base. But depending on her pose, she is a little wobbly. So you can see here, I don't even have the arm in, but she's still standing up on her own. Awesome. Oh, and in changing her pose, I also want to show you another difference there is between Capoche and Nendoroids. Um, I was aware of some of the differences, but since this is my first Capoche, I wasn't, I didn't quite know about this one. But in order to change her faceplate, oh, uh, where well, you're supposed to, you have to take off the whole head, um, and the neck joint's supposed to be with it, and uh, that's fine. Um, as you can see, see it's just a hole at the bottom, so the whole head has to come off in order to change the faceplate. And here's the back of the faceplate. 
know if you can see that. And the head part. The head part seems similar to Nendoroids, but that's a, a main difference. Here's first up on one of her poses, her with the the umbrella, with the open umbrella. She's supposed to be not needed in this pose, but it was a little hard for me to articulate her joints to get it in the way as it is on the box. Oh, well, you can't see it from here, but this pose. Um, and it's also it was a bit tricky um, because with the umbrella, they want you to use the arm bit from the closed umbrella, like to take the bar off and attach it to the other umbrella to make it longer so it fits in her arms, but it still was a little awkward to get into the two closed hand pieces and then to put the bottom piece back on. Um, but she still looks really cute, and I bet she would look even cuter if I had the pose exactly right. Something like this. Something like that. Uh, I'll get it eventually. She still looks really cute. And here she is with another one of her poses on the box. She still looks cute, but I'm not sure if she's ready to fight or ready to cry or, I don't know, her fists are up. And she has that frightful expression, so I'm not really quite sure, but it's still cute. And there's no doubt in this pose, she's definitely ready to do battle. She has her eye out, well, her magical eye, her Lord Shingen, and her gun out, ready to chase down her rivals. See her from this angle? Here's another pose, and as you can see, she's ready to do battle with her umbrella sword. This one's cute also, but I love the other pose better. And another note is that you can see her ponytail is, is articulated as well. So, you know, she's having a flyaway moment. Or down. This isn't, this piece isn't, it's just as it is, but you can move the ponytail aside from her head and neck, side to side, her arms up and down, side to side, twist her waist and her legs. Though I have to admit, I'm awful at posing this figure. She has some cute poses and they just don't come out quite right when I do them, but she still looks cute. And for just one more final comparison between Kapoche and Nendoroid, as you can see, here's Kapoche Rika standing next to Nendoroid Ryugo. And you can see the significant height difference, even without the base. Um, base at level, see? She's still pretty short compared to Rika. But they both are absolutely great figures. And that's it, guys. This is the pose I decided to settle on. This is her original pose that came in the box. I love the other poses, but to me, she's cuter this way. Don't you agree? Anyway, thank you for watching. Bye.